This video was brought to you by the generosity of my supporters on Coffee. Thank you for supporting the channel. Hello my lovelies. My name is Gilbert Dolphalian and the plan for today is to show you how to make a little segmented bag for holding dice or buttons or any other sort of little collectible that you might have lying around. Now this is a great little present with Christmas coming up. It's a very simple first project and it has a really great result that looks a lot more complicated than it actually is. I really love these, I've made them for both myself and my wife. I will be giving you dimensions and the sizes that I use but honestly I make these from scrap fabric and you can just work around what you have. The only thing to remember is to leave enough space so that it bunches up nicely at the top but I'll explain that as we get going. So there's not really a lot more else to say so let's get going with the sewing. To start you're going to need two circles to use as patterns. I made paper patterns but you can use plates or bowls or whatever you have lying around that's large enough. My larger circle was 39 centimeters or 15 and a quarter inches in diameter and the smaller one 29 centimeters or 11 and a half inches including seam allowance. Just make sure that one circle is larger than the other. I'd recommend leaving about a fifth of your overall diameter. That additional space is going to be the gathered portion portion at the top and if it's too scant it looks a bit unintentional. Remember to factor in seam allowance or account for it when you're transferring your pattern as well. Pick your fabric out and cut two pieces for each circle. They don't have to be two of the same fabric. As you can see I used an embroidered piece for the outside of my larger circle and then some cotton for the inside so that I wouldn't have to sew over the embroidery. In this case I also cut a third version of the smaller circle in a cotton to re reinforce the two smaller circles because the fabric I was using was very flimsy. Pin the two smaller circles together right sides to right sides. If you're using a reinforcing piece it goes on the outside so the right sides of the pieces that will be visible are still touching one another. Then sew them together around the outside using a straight stitch close to the edges leaving a gap of about 5 centimeters or 2 inches slightly bigger if your fabric is particularly thick. Turn your circles the right way round through your gap and then press the seam so it sits nicely. Then close the gap using a ladder stitch or if you always have issues with it like I do, a little whip stitch in a matching thread. Now you need to take one of the two larger circles, the one that you want to be on the inside of your bag. Put it down with the right side facing up and center your smaller circle on top of it. Find the center and using chalk or a washable marker, segment the smaller circle into six or eight segments. If you're doing a particularly small bag, you might want to just do four. Head back over to the machine and sew down your segments with a straight stitch, attaching the smaller circle to the inside of the larger one in the process. With that done you have your pouches ready and you're onto the final stretch. Take the outer large circle and place it right side down on top of the other large circle. So the right side is against the sewn down smaller circle and pin it around the outside. Sew them together leaving a gap as you did for the smaller circles and again turn them inside out, press them and close the gap with ladder stitch or a whip stitch. 
Next, mark a circle around the inner circle, as close to the top of the smaller circle as you feel safe in sewing, and sew it down through both layers of the larger circle. This will be the bottom of the gathered portion, and the closer it is to the segments, the less likely it is that anything will escape from them. With that done, the last thing to do is to use an owl to make two holes near the last sewn line. Use a whip stitch or a buttonhole stitch to make two eyelets, and then thread a cord through them that's at least as long as the circumference of the larger circle. I braided a cord using finger loop braiding, but you could braid or buy one as well. You can attach the cord to a safety pin and use that to guide it through, and that should make it much easier. And that's it, your bag is ready to be filled with goodies. I found that six segments on the size of the circles I had was just the right size to fit a set of dice, either a full D&D set, a 10 pack of D10s, or 36 mini D6s. And remember you can also fill in the middle portion as well. Other options are to use it to store buttons or other haberdashery items like spare bobbins and needles, or perhaps make a to-go sewing kit that can live in your bag. Enjoy! And that's it! As I said at the beginning, it's really simple, very quick, and has a really nice result that looks a lot more complicated than it actually is. I really like making these for presents because you can stuff stuff in them as well so it, it kind of doubles up as wrapping and the present itself. I've used them for keeping buttons in, they're really great if you have lots of different sets of buttons, and also for my dice too. But I could see them being used for holding little uh, gemstones in them, the kind of the semi-precious stones, you could use them if you have a coin collection as well. I, I mean, you could actually use it as a coin purse as well if you wanted. There's lots of uses for them, so it's very versatile and great to use. If you are interested in me showing you a video on finger looping, please let me know. I've linked to Morgan Donner's one because honestly, that's where I started to learn to do it. I have advanced from there now, but this is the one that I use most because I can do it without thinking. I do it quite a lot because I need something to do with my hands, so I do it while I'm watching TV and that sort of stuff, just to keep my hands busy. I don't do it while I'm playing tabletop, actually, because it's too difficult to stop and start. I do tablet weaving while I'm playing tabletop because you can stop and start on that, or embroidery, one of the both. Actually, embroidery floss would be another thing that you could keep in here, so that's another thing. Or thread, if it's small enough. So, that's it. My question for you today is, if you were given something like this, what would you put in it? Since there are so many options and lots of people have lots of different collections of things, there's lots of haberdashery things that can be kept in them, like I said. Another thing that would be really great to put, keep in them is poppers and closures and that sort of stuff, they would also go in there. So would you put haberdashery in there? Would you do dice? Would you do figures? There's so many different options, so let me know what you would put that in there if you got one yourself. Thank you for watching through to the end, and as always, a huge thank you to all of my lovely subscribers and to everyone who's been so generous over on Coffee. If you liked this or found it helpful in any way, please think about giving me a like or subscribing if you're not already for more costume and sewing related content, or donating to my Coffee if you're able. Stay safe, stay sensible, and I shall see you again soon. Bye! I was going to show you guys the next stage, but I lost my chair. Please come back later, Gilbert is thinking.